Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hello, everybody. We are here to talk welcome to Plathville and also un expected yeah got a lot on our plate a lot now before we get into it we do want to remind you to please hide your wife and hide your kids this is a politically incorrect podcast which means we say bad words we have stupid opinions and we're just ignorant enough to defend them and not apologize (laughs) and so if you are so funny you might want to find yourself another dance baby but if you're down to party and have some fun in a dumpster, maybe take our clothes off. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Get an OnlyFans. Welcome to this dumpster. Yeah, and if you are down to party with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We're finishing up our MILF Manor reactions. Yes, up we on are there, finally. And they are crazy they're great <laughs> yeah having a lot of fun we also just did a review slash recap of the sister wives trailer preview, the mm-hmm. trailer got all the way into that so yeah. definitely come and join us on patreon yeah and if you are watching on youtube please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us to grow and we're trying to get to four thousand. yeah we're like these poor raccoons <laughs> on the outside looking in on the beautiful landscape <laughs> of youtube somebody let us in please seriously so do your part thank you thank you in advance appreciate it do you want to just get right into welcome to plath mill (laughs) yes this episode was so boring kind of yeah omg like uh, there was like nothing but we start with the spartan race that the family does with Mike and all of the other kids except Ethan and except Kim and her sugar body. Well, you know Kim's not going to do the Spartan <laughs> race, honey. We know that's not yeah. going to happen. But we did get to see Micah without his shirt off again. I know. But also, little Isaac. <laughs> little Isaac, he's so hands off. You should be on Milf Manor. I could be. <laughs> I could be. I would Go run that house. Youngins. Kelly's got nothing on me, honey. No, honey, she don't. <laughs> But this was kind of a cute, wholesome segment, I guess, because the whole family is there together. Oh, they're doing something they love. I'm bored. But the only interesting thing was that Barry wanted to do this for a long time, but Kim was never interested in it for I obvious wonder why. reasons. <laughs> why could that be? Mm. You know, and he took a dig at her last week, too, with Micah present. I About how it. he wants to date somebody with, like, some semblance of a little bit of fitness. <laughs> could I find somebody yeah. out there? Taking a dig at Kim, but yeah, Love Kim it. never wanted to do it. So now he's got most of his kids, yeah, all of whom are fit. I'm super impressed with Amber. I know she's like what 14 years old, 15, yeah. She's got a banging little figure. I she's know. strong. Goals. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I thought they were all pretty cool. I, I could never do something like this. No, nor would I ever want to. I'm I not think. Gonna, I think you could. I don't want to. Di- I don't want to go through mud and stuff it's and get dirty. out of my hair. Yeah, yeah I don't like that. I think you could, and I think you would excel. Well, that's very nice of you, Just but. Saying. As we say here, we're down with the fatness. I don't think I could do it in under an hour. Like freaking Micah and... Yeah, Isaac was like 39 minutes. Yeah, although Micah's mad at him because he thinks that he skipped a step. Which he did, yeah. but he didn't mean to. No, he didn't. And if he had done it, would it really have added like an additional five minutes? No, he no. probably would have still beat Micah. Yeah, which I loved. Me too. And then Amber was third, which I was like... You're a freaking beast. She beat Barry. Yep. Barry was fourth. And then Mariah and Lydia were. They made it. You know. They're me and the you. End. <laughs> <laughs> me and you. Like the sun's going down. People are packing up the tents. They're like, is there anybody else out in the course? It's me and you. <laughs> For sure. Just in the mud drinking. Yes. Partying. You're vaping. I'm totally. getting drunk. Taking our sixth break in yes. between. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So that was pretty much it for them. And then we have Olivia and her producer planted friend in L.A. And going to I'm Pilates. Snorry. I'm just like, I do not care at all with their gay Pilates instructor. I can't. Well, this was the first week of this season where I really did join the consensus of people saying, why? <laughs> why are you on the television show? Like, why are we following 
your life and now we're going to have manufactured dating scenes and we're going to hear about your hoe phase. I know, which wasn't even a hoe phase. Not a hoe phase. And I also think it was just another attempt by Olivia to try and be morally superior. Uh Like women always get slut shamed, which they do. And called hoes, which they do. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking it back. And it's not that that's not valid. I think it is, but it's always so performative. I can't tell whether she really means it or not. And I don't find it enjoyable to watch personally. I don't. Me neither. And then you're talking to this friend that we've never seen before about your divorce. Right. And you're spilling all of this tea about Ethan, which is basically that he's a man child baby diaper baby. And he's saying the same shit to you in his letter that he said a couple years ago in a birthday card or something and how you don't think it's genuine. I'm like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Yeah, it's just another attempt to indict Ethan for being a subpar partner, which we already already know been knowing. Yeah, we agree with you. She does bring up the fact that he wrote her a letter three years ago when they were going through their separation. Mm -hmm. I think that was season three or four or whatever. And then he wrote that additional letter at the very end of, what is it, last episode? Yeah, when he signed the papers. Because she didn't have any capacity to listen to anything he had to say. So he wrote it all down. And then she compared and contrasted the letter he wrote three years ago to the letter that he wrote just now. And it's all the same shit. Like, there's been no progress. Yeah, according to Olivia. Right. I mean, we've made the argument for Ethan throughout the some of the prior seasons that he did try and then there was a point where he stopped trying so like I think he tried like earlier on in their marriage and then it just never was good enough and so it's just like I'm tired of her constantly talking about him but then not really owning up to any of her own shit in the marriage it's just him being a shitty partner so she had to leave and then I was kind of side-eyeing her a little bit for the fact that she started dating immediately once she moved to L.A., which mm-hmm. was like when they were still married, they were just separated. And I'm like, that's kind of similar to Kim Plath. It's not adulterous. Right. But it's kind of similar to Kim Well, Pat, the parallels are very interesting. And when she was out in Phoenix with Lydia Grace going on her Red Blazer real estate date with <laughs> yeah. her sister, didn't she say that she was unaccustomed to dating? Yes. And like she hasn't been out in so long. Like the last time she was really out to a bar or whatever was back in Florida with all those random women. I'm like, okay, well, which is it then? So mm-hmm. now, you know, a couple weeks later, three weeks later, maybe it's two months later. I don't know what the timeline is now. All of a sudden, as soon as you left Minnesota and you moved to LA, you were dating. Exactly. So that doesn't really sound very truthful to me but also I don't care like go ahead like if you feel in your heart of hearts that you're separated and that equals divorce and that gives you license to go do you I'm 100% behind it I've been there honey yeah for sure and I definitely agree yeah but like just tell the truth just tell the truth yep and I just don't know what's going on with that yeah that's my exact problem with it like just be genuine like you want everybody else to be genuine and you call Ethan out for being disingenuous in his letter but then you're kind of doing the same thing here and you're producing these moments for the tv show to stay relevant and that's where it's like okay everybody is though I mean we also have Ethan rapping with that skin alien (laughs) (laughs) that weird person with the big eyes and he looked like a very um distorted other dimensional just in Timberlake like yeah. AI deconstructed <laughs> reconstructed into a skin alien and I'm like who is this person you have all of these weird producer plant people to kind of support or buttress storylines right. that are boring as hell it would be so much more interesting if we could talk about Kim Plath's DUI I know can we talk about the adultery that's all we want to talk about I don't care about you rapping Ethan I don't care at all I don't care about you dating Olivia I cut well I kind of care. I don't. About Olivia dating. And I would love to see Ethan dating. I would love to see Isaac dating and everybody moving on with their life. But this is not what I want to see. I was very bored this episode. Very fucking boring. And I will give Olivia credit here because she did say something in this Pilates segment. She said, she's like talking shit about Ethan and how like he wasn't genuine in the letter, blah, blah, blah. But then she said... I don't want the hurt part of me to dictate how I feel about everybody else. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. If you Mm -hmm. actually mean it. Mm -hmm. I like that you're saying that and trying to take some kind of accountability Mm -hmm. for being reactive to everybody. But if I'm looking at your Instagram, I don't know if you're actually like embodying that. 
I don't know. We'll see. Well, the idea is of um, something called a pain body. Like everybody has a pain body, which is like this energetic or etheric version of yourself Mm. that collects all the pain and the trauma that you've been in in your life or that you've experienced. And so the goal or the challenge is to not live or speak from your pain body, but from your actual intentional human self that is always trying to develop and progress. Mm -hmm. And so we do have to kind of suss out, well, is Olivia talking from her pain body or is she talking from her intentional human that's trying to get better Mm. I tend to give her the benefit of the doubt but I can also understand when she lapses into her pain body because she's been through a lot as a child in a marriage now as a divorced person so anyway that's my um TED talk (laughs) on the pain body (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And so do mm-hmm. you think Ethan Plath's in his pain body? Yes, I think yeah. he only has a pain body. I think <laughs> his other human self does not exist. He's just a ghost in the energy of his pain body. Like he does not know how to articulate in a way that is healthy, yeah. that is substantive, that can like move a relationship along. He is only ever expressing himself from his trauma Agreed. and his bullshit. Yeah, he needs to get some fucking therapy or have somebody actually help him figure his shit out um, and learn to rap. <laughs> or not so like not. we actually don't need that from you thank you all i'd rather hear you sing in a johnny cash type of way yeah. playing your guitar yes. that's great stick with that <laughs> thank you agreed and then we have the most interesting part of the episode which is at the very end uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. where we get back from the spartan race and we're at micah and his girlfriend veronica's place And he's sitting there talking to the producers about how he missed her at the race. He wished she could be involved. And she comes out of the barn door. She's like, I can hear you. Uh," And then sits down. And we see her. Finally, we see her face. Yes. We get to actually see Veronica. And I think she's very pretty. Yes. (laughs) I think their interaction is so strange. Very fucking awkward. It's very stilted. I think maybe she could be socially awkward. I just don't understand what brought these two beautiful people together on this journey we call life. Mm -hmm. Cohabitating, sharing that space in Florida. Yeah. I don't get it. I... She doesn't seem to necessarily have a lot of affection for him. She might just be kind of a cold persona, though. Maybe. Like, I'm not really picking it up. And then even him, though, because he's kind of a very empathic, Mm -hmm. um, lovey kind of guy. Like, he's also pulled back in his interactions with her. I just, I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm side-eyeing it. There's something with these two people yeah there's some up with this veronica i'm not <laughs> sure what it is but it's kind of got my little raccoon monocle engaged and my little raccoon nose just sniffing the air mm-hmm. i smell some honey I oh smell yeah it. oh yeah and i've been seeing people online saying that she's kind of like a an olivia 2.0 because mm-hmm. she's kind of bossing him around we saw that in the first episode with the lists his chore lists and all that and even in this interaction they kind of have like a little not like a spat, but like a little disagreement of like who handles everything in the house. And she's like, oh, I do everything inside. And Micah does everything outside. And he's like, no, you don't. It's very bizarre. And then the topic of marriage comes up. And that was so awkward because the producer's like, do you see yourself getting married? Right after this, or right before this, Micah says, yeah, we act like a married couple because we live together. We have dogs together. Like we do everything together. And then the producers ask, do you see yourself getting married? And they just look at each other, all weird. And Micah's like, mm, no comment. Mm-hmm. Bizarre. Yeah, maybe they've talked about it before. Maybe Micah is open to it and she is not. Maybe it's mm. the other way around. But it's just a very interesting relationship. From what I understand, Veronica has met the family. I think we have Instagram posts on Micah's page going mm-hmm. back a year or longer. So like she has interacted with the Plast. They know who she is, but it just f- feels very strange. It just feels very strange. And I don't like it for Micah. Yeah. I think he needs a different kind of girl personally. I don't know. It just felt weird. It, and to me, my general vibe on it was that they've probably been together a lot longer than we even know because we have that photo of them on the beach with Kim and Ken Palmer 
and she's in it Mm. and everyone's like when was this taken like how long have they actually been together because micah in this season is acting like it's this new relationship he just flew back from la to move in with her in florida like on a whim i'm like "Mm." and wasn't he dating in season five like all of these randos in la and stuff like so which is it were you dating around or were you with this person or were they just trying to keep it secret i don't know they have every right to do that it's just there's something about this that's just not landing right with me i know i want to see more of how they interact together because this was kind of an awkward like impromptu like she's just on the couch because she chose to be on camera this time so it felt really awkward and she's like a real estate agent so i'm like don't you want to be like more personable like i don't know just honey i went up on her instagram just to check it out and see what's going on and there were like photos of mansions in southern florida and then what looks like a photoshopped image of her in these various houses kind of the same photoshopped image and it's at a weird angle her feet look really big it's just very strange i know it's really strange but i heard that micah and her now have a shared instagram account they do under veronica plath right yeah she has it veronica.plath and like the bio is something like you know don't make assumptions about us people think that they're married because she has it listed like that but I think she has it listed because it's like Veronica and then Micah Plath. I don't know. It's very weird, though, because it's their couple's Instagram and it only has three posts mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. They're weird to me. Micah, you're in danger, my friend. <laughs> and you're very young. What? How old is he? 22? Like 22, yeah. You do not need to be getting engaged or getting married to this woman in Florida. You don't. You don't need to be doing any of that. Well, I did that. Well, I know you did that. I did that too. But I just, he doesn't, he does not have the emotional ability, the emotional uh, capacity that you had at even 20 years old. Yeah. He's just not there. He has so much learning to do in the world. Well, and it just doesn't seem like he wants that level of commitment. Like just a couple episodes ago, he's talking about how he watched all these marriages fall apart. And he's like, I don't really want any part of that. And he has every right to feel that way. But I don't know. Is Maybe he, is he being a homosexual? Is he just like with her because he's got a place to live? He's broke. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Hobosexual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's being a homosexual, but yeah. he could just go back to Cairo and live with Barry. Oh, for sure. They seem to get along great. Yeah. But then I mean even last episode I remember Michael was talking about Barry's judgments like her he he was saying Barry probably still looks down on Micah for living with his girlfriend but not being married like Barry's still very traditional and believes in commitment and blah 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 and so maybe Barry doesn't approve I don't know I'm not seeing any of that from Barry but we're not privy to conversations they Mm -hmm. might be having behind the scenes I just don't see him as being judgmental because his whole life exploded right and like who is he to judge but maybe he is maybe he's being a judgmental father I don't know maybe I don't know I would like to see more of Veronica though I want to see more of their interactions. Oh, me too. I want to, with my raccoon monocle. Oh, me too. Girl. <laughs> some about her I don't like, honey. Yeah, because there's he's some. A, he's a tender-hearted person. He is. She's she a little seems Pisces. pretty abrasive. Mm-hmm. She seems a little, she's girl bossing a little too close to the sun. Yep. I worry about it, but it's his life. It is his life. Go live it, Micah, my I dear. Mean, with your dogs and all that. And then we have the preview for the next episode. We have Olivia again talking about her dating life and talking about her first date in particular where the guy was like, hey, you want to see my cats? And she was apparently so naive and went to his apartment and then realized it wasn't just his cat. He want to fuck. <laughs> want to see my he wiener. He want to fuck. Yeah. I wonder if she actually fucked him. Oh. Oh. Oh my god, I hope. And then we have Lydia Plath's birthday and the siblings have a surprise birthday party, but they're pretending like they don't give a shit about her birthday. So that'll be interesting. Before you go on, um, we did talk through the last week about Lydia Plath because it came out on Reddit somewhere that back in season three when Kim was getting on Lydia for texting a boy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and having a crush on a boy and a boy having a crush on her that boy was actually Nathan Meggs Olivia's brother the one that lived with them when they lived in Tampa I'm dead who has gone on to be a very homophobic patriot Uh uh-huh so it was Lydia and Nathan because we were hoping we would meet the boy that she fell in love with last year 
which was not Nathan. So these are two different boys. Man, she's a hoe. No, she's not. She's traveling <laughs> the world singing about Jesus and meeting men. But See, it was Nathan Meigs. I thought that her boyfriend was Nathan Meigs. No? It was just the guy she was texting? Yeah, it was the guy she was texting. I think the boyfriend from last season is a different guy. We don't know who that is. Unfortunate. Yes. I wish we knew who that was. But oh my God, how scandalous. Very us. Scandalo. So that means when Nathan was around, yeah, like last season, yes. was he was he like snooping with Lydia? Were they like sneaking out? Well, I don't know because Lydia was living in Cairo, taking care of Kim Plath's children at the time. But mm-hmm. I just wonder what was happening at the river or whatever. Oh my! Because god. Lydia was there and Nathan was in there. Her swimsuit, That's and everything right. too. Oh my god! Scandalous. Just thought I'd share that. I forgot about that. So mm-hmm. thank you for sharing. And then the last thing that we have in the preview for next episode is Kim and Barry meeting up for the first time since they were separated and Barry's frustrated about something and Kim's uncomfortable. It's not safe. <laughs> I don't even remember that in the preview. Were you sleeping? Maybe. Were you drinking? Yeah. Uh, no, I was just falling. <laughs> I was nodding off. This was a boring episode. <laughs> it was very But boring. I would love to get to it because I don't yes. think we've, have we seen them together yet? Nope. This season. So this will be the first time we're getting these people yeah. in the same room. And I think it's before the family concert. Like it's before oh, God. the whole, all of that. Okay. Which that would have been better to see this episode than Ethan rapping. A hundred percent. the Spartan race. Without question. God. All right. Are you ready now to get into unexpected? Yeah, ho. Okay. Let's get into it. All right. We are back to get into unexpected. Kaylee had her baby, honey. Yep. She had her baby. Take it away, Beatrice. He's eight pounds, three ounces. Big old head. Big old mega All head, mind. little body. Yes. A big old jelly, big head jellyfish, little, <laughs> little appendages. I know. Poor Kaylee. Huge just stuck head. up in the pelvis. I know. Can't get out. No shit. So then she's discharged after her emergency C-section and they get home and she's hoping that Graham will step up. He's in the car with them on the the drive home and it's bumpy and Kaylee's scar is hurting and Graham's just on his phone. Yep. He doesn't care. And he was on his phone during the entire labor mm-hmm. and or sleeping. And I don't know why we expect him to do something different or to interrupt his pattern. This is who he is. Yep. And while Kaylee, like, we can't really blame you because you're 15 years old and you don't know how to judge men and their patterns. Mandy, you already know this kid's not going to be helping. No so way. I don't know why you're always on the couch saying, well, I really hope that Becky and Graham step up and start taking care of little East. They're never going to do it. Never. They're never going to do it. But hopefully Mandy will get Kaylee to lock him in on some child support or something. So he's 16. Well, yeah, but he's going to get a job. And okay. Gonna working money, at the know? Dairy Queen or whatever. Yeah. Like that it's child some... support isn't going to make a difference until he's out of college. Yeah, true. But still, it's something. Is he too anxious to have a job, though? He's just going to be throwing up in his cubicle all the time as soon as things get hard. I'm sorry. I know. Is that rude? I mean, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just a shivering chihuahua of a man well and it sucks because he's fucking 16 so it's like can you expect a lot out of him but then you contrast that with nate from emily and nate thank you and i'm like thank he you. is a upstanding young gentleman he's stepping up he's trying to be a good dad so i don't know it's possible but at the same time he's also 16 and he's stupid He is stupid, and the plan at this time is that he's going to spend the first week out of the hospital with Kaylee and Easton Mm -hmm. so that he can pick up some of the slack and that Kaylee doesn't have to do everything herself. But then, of course, we will get to the preview. It doesn't seem to work out that way. (laughs) No, it doesn't at all. And then we have Anaya and Day Day. What in the world is happening, Anaya? You are 18 years old at the time of this <laughs> filming and you want to be a party promoter? Like you're leaving the house and you're leaving your, I don't know, three month old child with whomever, like whoever you can pawn your kid off so that you can go be a party promoter and dance and invite people. I don't know. What? I know. What? She wants to be an influencer. This is what's wrong with today's kids nowadays. Okay. I mean, That's seriously. your generation. No, it's Actually, not. Actually, it's not. Yeah. It's, it's, Gen, not. it's Gen Z. It's Gen Alpha, I think. Really? 
I don't know. I don't know either. You're a millennial. Track. It doesn't matter, but it just is so stupid. It is so It's dumb. not something that's going to last. No. Uh, but I guess if your perception, and maybe she is, because she said she's had her IG since she was 13 years old, and she's got 40,000 some odd followers. Yikes. And so if she says it's a party, people are going to come out to party. But I'm just like, wow, that's a lot. Like when you're two, three months postpartum. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And then going to do this party and you're calling day day up to watch your kid and he's like no i want to go and be an 18 year old too i'm gonna go do something and she gets all mad he ends up showing up and she's like okay bye i'm gonna be back at like three in the morning probably i don't yeah, know but the way that she frames is frames this is like it's in retaliation for day day wanting to go into the air force mm -hmm. well day day wants to travel yeah. the world and see the sights and leave us and so i gotta get my money up and i'm gonna go and be a party promoter <sighs> and a social media influencer and then they're showing all of these pictures and it's just her with her boobs out i and know everything and i mean she's a beautiful beautiful girl and totally. i know that that's currency in this world but i just want a little bit more for her and yep. i think day day's a good guy I think it probably makes a lot of sense for him to enlist in the military and get all kinds of benefits for you and for your child and exactly. for you all to get married. And like, it's a hard life. He's going to be gone a lot. But yep. like, he'd be able to provide for you and make good money and also learn some skills that he can monetize when he gets out of the military. Exactly. Why aren't we supporting this young man? I don't understand. I mean, why aren't we supporting her? I, true. There's no support. Why on am I judging end? her? For party promotion. I just, it's so vapid to me. Well, and I mean, she's a product of Ashley, who's That's like the, a terrible mom too. Like, I mean, she's, I know she's working a lot and I think she's a single mom and stuff. So she has to have a career. I wonder and why she's kids, single. But because she's hateful. Because she's terrible. And evil. <laughs> and know. she's teaching her children to be hateful yes, and evil. Exactly. Well, and like Anaya is inherently selfish because i mean we talked about this earlier in the season ashley was all worried about anaya and how she was going to be as a mom because she's going to have to think about somebody else other than herself and here we are seeing it where she's wanted to go party after she just gave birth to this beautiful baby is she trying to make money or is she trying to get back at day day i don't i don't really Both, know probably. i just i wish she would maybe enroll in university go ahead and get your education like start to contemplate what you want to do with yourself in the future it's just every single youngster now wants to be a youtuber I or know. a tiktok content creator it's cringe it is cringe and it's it's you're not going to be successful no. i don't think you're going to be successful but that's just me i'm an old head maybe i'm just judgy i apologize i agree and i'm not even old well i am old comparison to these you're an old kids. soul I am. <laughs> yeah. yes and then we have emily i hate her so much <laughs> she's the worst girl the discourse on reddit is kind of all over the place with emily like really? she's got people who are like well she's 18 years old she's also a kid that's and true she's trying to be a mom and she's living under taryn's rule and it's got to be hard and i'm like and that's all true but so is nate yes but so is nate the way she talks to nate chaps my hide so much beatrice i cannot Stutter. It's and ridiculous. Taryn hasn't seen her child in a sorry, her grandchild in a month and a half mm -hmm. because Emily left after being a complete biatch. Yep. And has weaponized her child immediately, as I knew she would, because I'm a fake psychic. I, I first episode, I was like, I don't like that girl. Uh huh. And now Taryn doesn't get to be a grandma, and Nate has to be at the mercy of Emily's temper, just because if he's not, he's afraid he's not going to see his child. And that's like his biggest fear. He talks about that every episode. I don't want to be a deadbeat like my dumb deadbeat dad was to me. Like that was super hurtful, and I feel that mm -hmm. because I'm the kid of a deadbeat dad. <laughs> I had a bio dad who didn't want anything to do with me. And I hated that growing up. And so I feel for him. He's really trying his fucking best, but nothing is good enough. I have been seeing some people on Instagram be critical of him because he was complaining about the diapers or something. And everyone's like, that's the least he could do is change the diapers after she had a traumatic birth. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. But he's complaining about how she's totally abusing him, like mm -hmm. yelling at him for forgetting her his phone and calling him stupid and immature at every single The tone second. in which she speaks to him, just speaking to him like he's stupid. And then on the couch to us, she's like, I feel like I have to be his mom. I'm parenting God. him. And he's so immature. I'm like, 
bitch, you are two years older Seriously. than this young man. You are also immature. I would dare say he's way more mature than you are. He's got the long view. He's thinking about his kid and trying to keep this together. He doesn't have the skills or the resources to know how to do it, but he's trying, but he's being so deferential to her. Yeah. He's being so timid around her. That just shows me how she is when the cameras are off. She's just walking all over him. And I thought it was really interesting when yes. her own dad sits yes. down on the couch with Nate and says, I really want to thank you because oh. this girl is a lot. I and love that. You are putting up with a lot because we all know how she is. And that's all I'm going to say. So the unspoken thing is she's a whole hell of a lot. Uh -huh. And she's mean. Yep. I loved that because I thought Nate really needed to hear that from a male figure too. Like he's hearing it from his mom, of course. I know Taryn's being like, she's a big old bitch. I hate her. But you're doing great, sweetie. I love you. Like, and Taryn was even saying... In this episode, she didn't want Nate to move out with Emily because he's 16. He's still a kid and he's still in high school. It's like he still needs to do all these things. And Emily seems pretty bitter about that. But it's like, girl, I don't know what you expected when you had sex, presumably unprotected, with a 16-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. You fucking dummy. Like, I'm sorry. You're calling him all immature. What about you? Yeah. And that's okay. You guys are both kids. Like, mm -hmm. I get it. You're both going to be immature. Your brains aren't even fully formed yet. Right. But why is he worse for exactly. what he did than yeah. what you did? I don't understand it. And Cognitive Taryn, dissonance. Taryn is well within her rights to be a parent to her minor child, who, again, is only 16 years old at this time. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to be in the house until 18. Sounds like Emily was all ensconced in her house, Taryn's house, with all kinds of attitude, ignoring Taryn, not talking to Taryn. And don't get me wrong, Taryn looks like she's got a bit of her own attitude. And yeah. She's got a backbone. I'm sure she was calling things out and standing for sure. up for her son. But it feels like Emily's primary problem is that Taryn won't let Nate do what Emily is telling him to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. She feels like Taryn's controlling him and therefore controlling Emily. And well, she doesn't like that. Because Emily wants to control him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a power struggle. Nate, honey, at some point you're going to have to throw off these chains and stand up to Emily. And I don't know if you've done it yet because... Again, they're married. Mm -hmm. So they go from this season to at some point getting married. Yeah. It ain't going to last. At some point, the dam's going to have to break. I just hope she doesn't continue to weaponize their child because that's not fair to the child. She will. And it's not fair to Nate. It just sucks. Well, and you have to wonder how much she's projecting onto Taryn because she herself is motherless. Right. Her mother abandoned her. And so Taryn might have been doing everything she could do and might have been doing things right but because emily has all of this trauma and bullshit attached to her idea of what a mother is like maybe taryn was never going to win in that situation no matter how much she wanted to help yep you just don't know but all i know is what i see and emily has got her whole ass out she's treating nate terribly and i feel bad for him I do too. And also we can make the argument that she is postpartum. So maybe yes. she's dealing with a lot of that too. She was like this before him. She though. was a little bit, but she was also like overdue and really fucking frustrated and tired of being pregnant and that can fuck your hormones up. So like, I'll try to give her a little grace in that, but I'm like, stop being such a bitch mm -hmm. to this man who's actually stepping up and trying to be there for you and your kid. Boy, but yes. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. Yes. <laughs> you got a kid now, you a man. Yeah. Well, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then last but not least, we have Lily and Lawrence. And we can boycott this, but I don't want to. Yeah. Because that stripper, honey, <laughs> was Girl. so busted Girl. and broken down. I'm like, who's paying for this stripper? Where are we finding these TLC strippers? But I'm jumping ahead. Please yeah. take us there. Well, it's the day of Lily's bachelorette party. They do spa day or whatever. Does Lily not have actual friends? Uh, yeah. No. Because the only other contemporary person there, like somebody that is even remotely around her age, is her sister who's uh -huh. 30. And I think Lily's 22. Yeah. And then it's her mom. And then it's Lawrence's mom. And then it's some other old bitty. I'm like, don't we have young girlfriends no. that want to take you out on a bachelorette? It was really sad. I know. I kind of felt bad for her. Um, but they do a spa day, which was great. She's like, I have no kids. I get a facial. This is awesome. And then they go onto a party bus. And this is where 
we have the stripper that ambushes Lily. And Lily didn't know about this stripper. She didn't Mm -hmm. want a stripper. Her and Lawrence had talked about this. He didn't have strippers at his bachelor party, so therefore she wasn't going to have any at hers. But I guess her sister, dumb, but probably meaning well. And probably put up by production. Totally. Come on. What else have they got going on? I mean, really, they got nothing. Mm -mm. They surprised her with a stripper who was... Ugly AF. <laughs> I mean, STD ridden, <laughs> sweating. I want to say seventy years old, greasy, <laughs> just butt. really not attractive. In a thong. In a whole thong. I, I mean, can't. it was blurred out, and I was looking because you know I will get that monocle oh, out, and I'm sure. like, I see a lot of skin. Yep. He either has a thong on or he's full on naked. Naked with I his know. everything, a dong out, just uh-uh. flapping it in people's faces. Uh uh-uh. uh. And poor Lily is traumatized. (laughs) She's like running away from the stripper. She's hiding in the corner. She's like super upset. And then after the stripper leaves because nobody wants him there. (laughs) Then Lily immediately texts Lawrence and says they had a stripper and he's pissed. Yep. Doesn't even respond. Doesn't even respond. And then after the party bus or whatever, they come home. Lawrence is nowhere to be found. He's, he's in, in the, the basement, basement, all but her. He's so mad. Yeah. He's so mad. Yes. Didn't even come up to say hi to Lily. Lily goes down there to try and talk to him. And he's like, fuck this. Can't believe you did this. It's over. It's We're over. not getting married. And she's like, I'm telling you, it wasn't my idea. I ran to the back of the bus. I didn't even look. I didn't want any part of it. But he is so angry. Even his mom. Uh-huh. Sandy, who we love. We love her. It's like, Lawrence, it wasn't her fault. She wasn't even looking. She didn't want any part of it. He's like, I don't care. We're not getting married. But that's all just so Producer staged. fake out. Yes. Because they end up getting married the very next episode. I know. It's so silly. But his reaction was totally over the top. I thought it was ballsy that he even reacted like that in front of all of the family. Like, yeah. her parents were there and he's reacting like that. I mean, like what the fuck it's just immature couple stuff totally. i mean it's really kitty stuff i'm like okay so there was a stripper there i mean uh, you don't like that you don't have to like that but to take it out on lily to that extent and to make kind of a public spectacle out mm-hmm. of it is just really immature and dumb you're gonna look back at that and feel silly but it's literally like clayton and Anna Lee from 90 day fiance yes. it's so dumb And then we have the preview for next episode. Graham, who is supposed to spend a week with the baby, Mm -hmm. decides to go leave with his friend. Literally not 24 hours after they bring Graham home. Yes. Or the uh, Easton home. Yes. Which really bothers me. Mm -hmm. And again, Graham's only 16 and his brain isn't fully formed. And nobody taught him how to be a man because he has been living and taking care of his messed out bipolar mother, in my opinion. And so he (laughs) doesn't know how to people. He doesn't know how to person. Yeah. But come on, man, you know that your baby has just come home from the hospital. You're not even going to spend 24 hours there before you're out i know not a good look not a good look at all and i felt bad for kaylee but it's like i mean girl what did you expect (laughs) what are we doing this is who we laid down with this is who we had a baby with i guess on instagram people are coming for graham really confronting him about his bullshit and he immediately goes to those people's profiles and then comes back and calls people old and fat and yeah, it insults everybody. Like, Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he's not he's having so any young. criticism on IG, yeah. Of course not. That sucks. But I mean, don't be a deadbeat. Don't yeah. be a piece of shit. Yeah, but I mean, he's 16. Yeah, but, but Nate then again, is too. Nate. Yeah, so. And Nate's doing really great. Yep. But, you know. Not that Emily would admit it, but. Of course. <laughs> and then we have Jenna with her pregnancy test because... <laughs> Her and JJ be fucking unprotected. Like right. we learned about a couple episodes ago. Round again. And she's probably, pre- she's definitely pregnant. I think she does have the baby. Yes. Because um, we see it on Instagram or whatever. I think the baby's name is Jimmy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I think I read somewhere. All right. Yep. I'm not going to judge, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. named Beatrice, so why I can't judge. <laughs> I love your name. It's awesome. Thanks. Uh, but I have been seeing on Reddit and on her Instagram, she's coming for the haters because people mm-hmm. are like being really critical of Jenna and like why is she leaving her kid when she goes to Orlando Studios, like blah, blah, blah like stupid stuff. Yeah. And she's like responding to every single hater. Mm, like, you can't do that. I know. Yeah. She cannot take criticism either. You just inspire them to continue to troll you. Yep. 
And so, I mean, sometimes we address our haters, we totally but like do. we we laugh about it. Like yeah. I fully expect to get trolled. Oh yeah, and to get dragged. Yeah, and frankly, I deserve it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so it's okay. Yeah. But yeah, Jenna, you shouldn't do that. Like, don't give them any energy, honey. Yeah. But she's young and dumb, like yeah. everyone else on this show. Yes. And then we have Lily saying for the producers that she doesn't know if she wants to get married. Okay, with your wedding dress on and your makeup all done. I mean, shut up. Why are you on this season? It makes no sense. There are so many other kids across America having babies. I know. That we would have wanted to meet. Not Lily yep. and Jenna. Get them off my television. For real. I don't want to see them at all. Thank so that's you. it. Well, this was fun. <laughs> yeah. I had a great time. Yeah. I mean... It's kind of boring. Latho was boring, unexpected. Yeah. It's a bit kind of boring. boring, but I always have fun with you, honey. Of course. Oh. Now, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope oh you go onto your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review. Ah! It really helps us grow the pod and get fatter, and we appreciate that. Thank you. We will be back next week on Monday sharp yeah. to talk sister wives. We are in season five. We are doing the rewinds. Make sure to join us. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out. Bye. Bye guys.